and to be here. And my, it's not really a poem, it's a story. So, and it's called Driving Down Memory Lane from Germany to Alberta and BC. Ian Tyson brought me to Canada. He led me like a horse to water, his smoky, sexy voice telling me to go out to Alberta, where the weather is good there in the fall, where I can find friends to work for and where four strong winds are blowing lonely with seven seas running high. I was intrigued. Ian's voice lassoed around my heart and lured me away from what was near and dear to me in my homeland of what was then known as West Germany. I'll follow you when the time's right. My artist boyfriend Thomas nestled my neck in the departure lounge at the Frankfurt International Airport as my dad stood in line to buy a farewell coffee. Caffeine induced and bug eyed, I stared out the window at the snow capped Rocky Mountains, admiring the vastness of the somewhat bleak landscape, passing over snow tipped brown rocks, jutting up high towards the plain beckoning me to land, to belong, to build a new home. Thomas's old guitar slung over one shoulder, my worn leather backpack stuffed with hopes and dreams, balancing on the other side. I greeted my new employer, who had waited for hours for me to emerge through the international arrivals gate at the Calgary airport. Welcome to Calgary and Canada. Gail smiled at me and motioned for me to follow her. I felt like moving in a bubble, being surrounded by unfamiliar sounds and sights. After we stuffed my luggage into the trunk of her jeep, Gail was spreading her way through traffic and pointing out points of interest along the way. Heritage Park, the Calgary Tower, the highway to Banff. We exited the old Banff coach road with me still holding onto the striped guitar strap and the confidence of having made the right decision to leave my homeland to immerse myself in a new way of life at the foothills of Calgary. My grandma's voice trailed from my memory, reminding me to be helpful and polite, honest and brave. Work hard, speak with your own beak, and always be proud of your roots. Her advice lingered while I was watching countless prairie sunsets in the early 80s, to filling my lungs full of salty air at the shores of the Pacific considering myself blessed by West Coast beaches and nature. From having been a nanny working with preschoolers, to digging for clams on the Vancouver Island beach with my own children, instilling a sense of connectedness and love for the sand, the beach, nature, and their home and native land. I injected pride into their hearts, and I feel proud for having had the opportunity to settle along these shores. It's a long way from the Black Forest in Germany to the Pine Center trails of Lynn Canyon, from the uncertainty of a shy young woman to the rock-solid beliefs of an immigrant wife and mother singing our national anthem out loud during annual Canada Day celebrations and Remembrance Day ceremonies at the local cenotaph. Why did you become a Canadian and what does being Canadian mean to you? I get asked every now and then, and although I have an answer ready in mind, I add it, sway from the stock response, and swoop my arms like a Canadian goose, opening her wings in mid-flight. I embrace the freedom of our country as I swing through the air, then stop to gaggle with my neighbors and prefer not to swear, but allow an A to slip out here and there, and embrace a sense of belonging as I share my good fortune, my feelings, my country, my lair. Home is where the heart is, they say, where one feels safely rooted, connected, with a sense of contentment wrapped around one's body, like a smooth striped blanket that was a gift one snowy Christmas morning many years ago. We still count our blessings and share our love and treasures. Abundance is always abound in the beauty of cascading waters that follow the gentle flow of Lynn Creek as it meanders in the summer and rushes in springtime, filled by melting ice from the mountains and after a heavy rain flow to meet the ocean waters of Barad Inlet. High running seas ebb and flow as we skip along the sand and dip our toes into the ocean. We stand on guard for thee. 
National pride made us shine as my younger daughter and I celebrated Canada 150 by driving from our home in North Vancouver eastwards along highway number one, past Salmon Arm in Golden, BC, across the border into Alberta. The mountains are so beautiful, the scenery just breathtaking. Katie turned her head from side to side like a bubble-headed plastic toy dog on the console in the front of our car. Before we waved bye-bye to BC and felt swallowed up by the magnitude of the Rocky Mountains, we stopped in Yoho National Park to admire the clear green blue waters of Emerald Lake. Later we inched along serpentine roads and long straight stretches of highway until we reached the village of Banff, Alberta. I did not recognize this place that I frequented as a tourist in the mid-80s and I was surprised by the development that had mushroomed this sleepy hamlet into a bustling tourist mecca, complete with a commercial mall and countless high-end hotels, almost interfering with the natural surroundings and tranquility. Local lore states that black bears and young grizzly bear now mingle with tourists for a bite, and highway overpasses have been installed to allow four-legged forest creatures like deer and moose to safely get around their home, this once untouched natural national park. Katie and I felt blessed to be spotting marmot, deer, and even a bear on our journey through Alberta. Well, the weather was good, and four strong winds were still blowing lonely under the vast open skies. We sing along the familiar tune, and I tip my hat to Ian Tyson. Thank you very much.